Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided to do a video for those of you who are beginners in dancing in the ballroom dance world or maybe you are looking to start ballroom dance and you just are looking for some tips and advice on how to get started, ideas of what you should know before actually starting. And I'm first going to start out kind of with my background a little bit for those of you who are new to my channel. My name is Angelina and I have been a ballroom dancer for three years, it will be three years this August. I got into it absolutely accidentally, did not really expect expect to get into it at the age of 15 because I'm now 18 so I was a late starter and I have kind of grown a lot at least in my opinion as a dancer in the past three years and the experiences that I have had and the approach that I have taken to dance and my mindset about it and to start off with the very first thing that I wish I knew before starting and kind of a tip to those of you who are starting out is that there is a whole world of competitive modern dancing out there and there are also more styles latin or standard dancing there's also smooth and rhythm and there's also kind of a more social ballroom dancing approach and a collegiate ballroom dancing approach and all of those approaches and styles have competitions that you can compete at at any level you are if you are 15 and you're starting out at the very beginner level you can have competitors in that category and have competitions or whether you are a younger dancer and you're like six or seven you're starting starting out there are also competitions in your level or if you're already you know older maybe you're over 20 and you're starting out there are also competitions available for your age and in any style and it also goes beyond just the local competitions that you might find or that your dance instructors might recommend to you there are also European competitions ballroom dance is really taken on seriously as a sport and there are championships that are hosted all over Europe and there are also world competitions the second thing is that when you are starting out, look up videos of ballroom dancers, professional ones and amateur ones, look up even beginner categories just to explain how that works for you. When you start out, you will probably start out with learning closed and syllabus figures and routines and these are you only have those specific closed figures in the routines that you can put and mix around so you can't add any other uh, type of open moves in closed syllabus there are categories so there's bronze silver and gold and for each of those categories there are competitions in your age range then after you are past that bronze silver and gold closed levels you get into open levels and those are novice pre-champ and championship so pre-championship and championship levels and those are competed at the amateur level and usually after you have competed amateur championship level for a while and you have some good results that either you are happy with or you know you just feel like that is the best that you will be able to do in the amateur category you can claim yourself as a professional dancer and compete in the professional categories now professional categories are only for for adults. So using those categories I've just explained at Google each and every single one to see examples of competitions and examples of the dancing that you will be able to learn when you start dancing. That also goes on into your dancing career so if you've already started dancing always look at professionals and amateur you know high-level amateur dancers and use them as your inspiration and to kind of get you motivated to become better. Also when you watch dancers who are more technically developed than you and have more experience than you it also helps you imagine yourself in that same position and subconsciously it does help you improve your dancing now the third thing that you should know about bottom dancing is it is very expensive I actually did not know this as I was starting out and if you're really thinking about going into it seriously and competitively be prepared for very big numbers to have to pay for all of your lessons classes your costumes your hair and makeup and you know the travel costs that will go into competing because usually if you are taking a more serious approach then you will want to compete at other out-of-state comps and 
out of the country comps so be prepared for that also the more you train with a more professional and experienced coach the more money you will have to pay for that class so also keep that in mind i think that when you're starting out to teach you the basics you don't need to pay a top world champion to teach you them but when you are getting more into it be prepared for those in the future but you will need those extra high level coaching opportunities as you grow as a dancer and as you become better and as you advance in those levels into the open categories. Now going into the actual dancing part and like taking your classes, you know, usually when you're going into your first class, you don't really know what to expect. You don't really know what to bring, what to do. What I will tell you is that you need to arrive at least 15 to 30 minutes before your scheduled class time, whether it be a group lesson or a private lesson. The reason for this is because you need time to warm up and get your body prepared before you dance and if you are a beginner dancer you're not really sure how to do that honestly you just need to do something that warms up your muscles high knees booty kicks high leg kicks uh, arm circles warming up your neck side to side and around uh, doing calf raises and jumping up and down doing straight jumps up and down all of that kind of helps warm up your body and if you want a specific video on kind of what a dancer's warm-up should look like definitely like comment down below and I can make a video on that but warming up is so so important and you should also give yourself just enough time to kind of get mentally prepared for your lesson or class as well also you might not realize that but changing into your leotard and skirt or if you're a guy into your shirt and pants and putting on your shoes and tying them and maybe fixing up your hair making sure that you look put together also takes a lot more time than you might realize so I would say like at least 15 minutes but to be on the safe side 30 minutes before your lesson is a good time to arrive. When you are a dancer, it is a lot more than just the classes and the lessons that you are taking. There's also a lot of self-practice that needs to go on. And I think that when I went into it, I did not really think about that or know about it because I never even knew that the competitive you know, world existed until later into my dancing. So obviously I only came across the idea of self-practice after I started to kind of create these goals for competitions and doing well at competitions. I think that if you are a beginner dancer, starting out with a little bit of practice, at least like every single day or in the days that you don't have your lessons or even a little bit after your lesson are all things that you should be doing, even if you're not necessarily thinking about, you know, going to world competitions and top competitions and you're doing this more for yourself and you just want a, a great performance result from it, you still need to practice to become better. So practice is important anyhow for any level the higher level the more practice you should be doing also another thing is conditioning and stretching and kind of physical strength is so important for performance and competition results and just your performance as a dancer in general i didn't realize how much physical energy and ability you need to be able to have when you are a dancer some of the technical things that you learn and that i have learned it's not necessarily that i can't perform them but some of my physical body abilities kind of do not allow me to be able to do them or make it just a lot more difficult for me to do them over like a long period of time so for example um latin those of you who have been following my dance journey for a while know that i no longer compete latin and will not be practicing it seriously or dancing as i will focus more on standard but when i did used to do it a couple months ago it would be very hard for me to do all of the hip actions and all of the technical sides to your ankles and feet when i was dancing because my muscles were not properly trained for those types of movements. It's also important to maintain your core so that it helps you maintain that posture and not get tired from holding it. Form is a lot more different from your typical average day-to-day -day posture and form that your body holds when you're even walking around or doing other things. It's a whole other thing and a whole other level of body awareness and body training that you need to be able to do. So do not go into dance expecting a lot of amazing results if you're not willing to put in the time to do extra conditioning, stretching, and physical maintenance and muscle growth and development in addition to your classes and dancing and self-practice. And the last thing that I will say is improvement does take time and it does take 
practice. Once again, if you are thinking about getting into dance or you are a beginner dancer, do not expect results if you're not willing to invest and dedicate yourself to those results and to getting those results. That will be it for this video. I kind of just covered the basic beginner tips and advice that you should know before getting into ballroom dance or any type of dance, honestly. I hope you did find this helpful and informative in one way or another. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!